So far, we have seen a number of Gantt chart visuals in Power BI, and all have their ups and downs. On screen now is the Gantt chart by XFIS, one of the most advanced Gantt charts that, uh, that is out there for visuals. Today, I'm going to share a neat little trick I learned from one of my BI colleagues, uh, Anne-Sophie. So Anne-Sophie, if you're watching this, thanks for this great tip. And as always, consider subscribing and clicking on that like button because it helps the channel a lot and lets you know when there's future content coming in. First thing I want to do is I want to grab the Power BI file from the most recent Gantt charts video that I did. Now you can follow along with me by grabbing that file yourself. Uh, all you need to do is be subscribed to the newsletter. There's a link in the show notes. And what I do is I open up the, the project corner subscribers and I navigate to search and I'll find the five Gantt. So this is the file that you want to use and just download that and you'll have it available in your folders. And here is that file. And just so you know which file this is, it has table data, it has Gantt chart by Lingero, as timeline, let's just give it some time to refresh. So here is as timeline, here is Gantt chart for Lingar Lingaro, uh, Gantt charts by ICFIS, by far the most extensive Gantt chart that I've seen so far. Suffice to say, we have the different Gantt charts in this file. And you can download that file once again, just subscribe to the newsletter and you'll get the link. Uh, all those visuals are here in the custom visuals section. Now what we want to do is we want to create a KPI field and combine that with the name fields of either projects or tasks. So let's dive into customizing the data. Going to transfer data, and we're going to start with the projects, I believe, which has a project status. Now, to know what kind of data is in the project status, we can just go in and find the status field and move that in a field where we have a canvas. So there's amber, completed, green, red, and something that is undefined. Then for the task status, let's just have it in here as well. And for the task status, we have completed, future, on track, late, and overdue. So what we're going to create is we're going to create visual representations of these fields. So let's start with the project status. We've amber, completed, green, and red. So opening up the Power Query Editor again, we navigate to choose column, go to column. And from here, we will open up the project status. And here we see the different values that we have. So for a lot, it is empty, which basically means that I didn't fill in the data for those projects. Shame on me. However, let's create that column. I'll make it a conditional column. And that conditional column I'm going to call KPI and name. I will merge that KPI field that I'm going to create and combine that KPI field with the name so that it is actually going to be one field. So clicking on column name, I'm going to select that status and I'm going to add another couple of clause. I'm going to add another couple of clause. So navigating back, we have Amber, completed, green, and red. So let's amber, completed, green, and red. We want to have a fifth value for the empty rows. We'll get back to that in just a moment. So let's start from the top. We have completed, we have green, amber, red. And for this trick, you want to go to your keyboard and find that Windows key and press the period value. And you want to combine that with the period value. So Windows period will open up 
the emoticons. Very nice, very neat little trick. Uh, if I click on the green circle, and you can find that in the, uh, what was it? I think it's in the symbols. And I have it on the recent, so it's been a while. Uh, yeah, under the symbols, so the heart symbol, you'll have that in here somewhere. And because this is completed, we want to have that green. Windows, period, and then navigating to the recent, I have them all here. I will use the green symbol. And this little icon doesn't look like a green symbol to me. It doesn't to you, I would assume. That's because this section of Power BI doesn't yet know that this is actually a green circle. Now that will come in the future, I'm sure of it. But for now, just know that we entered a green value here. So Windows period, another green circle, then Windows period, and we have a yellow. Oh, we, we could actually find and figure out if there is an actual amber value here as well. And here you go, that looks like amber. And then there is a red value, my recents as well. That's red. And for the blank values, I actually want to have a blank icon. And once that's completed, we see that KPI and name value here. And just to make sure that we have the data, we can click on apply and see what that does in the actual uh, canvas. So I needed to restart my machine. So there might be a, a short glitch there, but my system overheated. It's very hot in the Netherlands at the moment and I had the machine on the whole day. So let's, um, let's have a look at the KPI and name value here. So for the project status, we have the blank value, we have the amber, green, completed, and red. So this part worked. And as you can see, it actually shows up with the correct colors. So what we want to do is we want to take that KPI and name value and actually append that to the name of the project. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into home, transform data. And once that's loaded, I will navigate to projects. And I'm going to choose columns, go to column, and I go to project name. And I'm selecting the name, and I'm going to drag that all the way to the right next to that KPI value. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is probably because there's better reasons. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't know of a better way to merge two columns together other than having them next to each other. If you do know a better way, just let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to I'll be sure to like that comment. So navigating to KPI and name, selecting also the project name, I can now click on the transform button and I can click on merge. I'm going to merge these two values here. Oh, wait, I'm going to add a column and I'm going to merge those two columns. Forget that comment that I just made because I can actually have two values here. So merge, I'm going to call this KPI ampersand name and I have a completely new column. So that column has the KPI values as well as the project name. And let's navigate to home, close and apply. Just click on apply because we are going to do some more stuff in the query editor. Let it evaluate. And once that's completed, we'll have a look at our GAN charts. So here we go. We have now gotten the KPI and name value can drag and drop it here and as you can see it has these empty values red amber green and I want to see that in a GAN chart so let's go ahead and see how that works with the Lingero GAN chart so instead of using the project name 
I'm actually going to use the KPI and name. I'm going to click here. I'm going to open it here. And what you see is you see instantly how we're doing with our color scheme. That just looks great, right? And even <laughs> compared to the gray values that are default in the Lengaro Gen chart. So let's um, see how that works on the as timeline. As timeline, I'm going to select that. And instead of having the project name here, I'm going to have the KPIs and name here. Same thing happens, same thing applies. I'll have those values correctly with a nice KPI here. Let's see the uh, XFIS GAN chart in action. Now this is the most complex GAN chart that I've seen so far. So this might take a while to load, but here it is. So here we see project and we see tasks. And let's replace the projects with the KPI and name. And here we go, we have that KPI name here, the new stuff, untitled project, it's still, it's still loading, but suffice to say, we have a nice little visual telling us that we're doing okay or we're not doing okay at all. So in here, we're going to click on that visual. And here we have the Y axis having project name. We're going to replace that and just like that, we have that visualization again. All colors are represented here. Now for the last one, a terrorist GAN chart, we also want to see that one. The main issue here is that it is only looking at, so for the Actaris, we go to task name and we're going to replace that project name with our KPI name as well. Just going to remove that here. And what we'll see, and what we'll see is no change so far, but we might want to click on this button here to collapse them all. Basically meaning that we will collapse from a project level to a task, uh, from a task level to a project level. Well, at the moment, my machine doesn't really want to cooperate here. So let's navigate to the KPIs and names again. Because the funny thing here is that you can perform the action that I just did on a project level, basically on any level that you would like to have. So for instance, we have the task level here as well. So we have task status, which is by the way, native to project online. And we can use that to create something similar to the project status here. So let's do that right now. My machine is still very slow, so I'm very sorry. Project tasks, let's navigate to project tasks. We'll create an additional column. And once the page is loaded, once the table is loaded, we can press on the conditional column here. And the conditional column is again going to be KPI and name. And for this one, I'm going to choose the task status. So because we know that there are actually five statuses, I'm going to add five values here. So that's one, two, two, three, four, five. Task status. Now you want to have these as being equal to completed. So again, windows period, green, and you get the drift. I'll just quickly fill these in. And just like the last time, we're going to grab the project name, or we're actually going to take the task name, move that all the way over here, select both, click on add column, merge columns. Separator is going to be a space and we're going to call this KPI ampersand name creates that new task and we can again click on close and apply to see the result and now we have the kpi and name 
and here we have that long list of tasks that are overdue in my projects doesn't seem very off the truth there because I haven't touched that environment in a long time so to see that in action in the Gantt chart by Xviz let's open that Gantt chart here let's make sure that we select one of the values here and instead of task name I'm going to click on going to close the task name and here we see that every little task and project has that Gantt chart. Now in case you want to get access to the file that I've used here make sure to subscribe to the newsletter and there's a link in the show notes and if you want to know more about the Gantt chart visuals that I review in other videos there's a playlist on screen now. I'd ask you to subscribe and like the video, but you probably get the drift here already. So hope you do and see you next time.